Sit back and put your feet up as we head into qualifying here in Kuala Lumpur. Over the next few minutes, we'll find out who's got pace in the car and who hasn't. Well, the weather's certainly going to cause a few problems for the drivers here in Malaysia. It's currently raining, and we can see some teams struggling to get the best out of their cars today in what are really difficult conditions. Well, it will certainly have an impact on today's qualifying, and some drivers are natural in the wet, but others might not be looking forward to getting out on track and having to tiptoe their way around. Yeah, that is definitely me. I hate running around in the wet on any F1 game. It's just, I don't know, I can't deal with it. But welcome back, guys, to F1 2015 career mode. This is the Max Verstappen career mode where, where we're trying to get this Toro Rosso up into the top five. So here we are in Malaysia, round number two here for this season. Uh, just going straight into qualifying now. It looks like we've got a possibly fully wet weekend, and I really despise these types of weekends, especially this early in the season because I really wanted to have a gauge at how quick this car is after Melbourne. So as you can see, putting in a few laps already, we're in P14 at the moment, getting slower and slower as the session goes on. I've only used one set of wet tyres so far, I was just trying to get a feel for the track, try and just do as many laps as I could in, in succession in order to get up to speed and uh, I think this is our best lap here so coming up to the line we do a 1 minute 50.017 into P7 so that's where we're going to start for this race Good afternoon and welcome from Sepang for what is going to be a fascinating race it's the Malaysia Grand Prix with over 30 P1s to his name Lewis Hamilton's already one of the most successful pole sitters in Formula 1 history well, he's added to that impressive tally this weekend. And today, he'll be hoping he can add another win to his record as well. There are a lot of variables that can cause a driver to be happy with the car one day to struggling with it the next. Track temperature, excessive tyre wear, or a change of fuel load can all affect the feel of a car. He'll definitely be hoping that when the race gets underway, he's got the same balance as he enjoyed in qualifying. Kimi Raikkonen has been outperforming his fellow world champion teammate throughout this weekend so he'll hope to continue doing so through the race this afternoon. The first person any Formula 1 driver wants to beat is his teammate. And never has that been truer than at Ferrari where we've seen a sizzling intra-team rivalry between two ex-world champions. So here we go lads, ready for the start of this race. Once again, it's raining. So not looking forward to this one if I'm going to be brutally honest. Uh, if you're a long time subscriber, you'll know that Malaysia is one of my weaker tracks, so I'm... Um, Really not looking forward to this one, but you know, if you never know, sometimes the race performance can change quite dramatically in comparison to qualifying. Sometimes the grip levels aren't quite the same, and hopefully, maybe being the race heavier fuel, the car will be a little bit more stable, and maybe I'll just be a little bit more uncomfortable with the conditions, if that makes sense. But here we go, ready for the start of this race, and away we go from lean revs, shifting up early to just dull the, the wheel spin as much as we can. We get away now in P9, and uh, coming into turn one, we'll see if we can move up a few positions here. But Hulkenberg diving up the inside into the first corner. He's almost parking the bus now that he's got his free position. We almost made contact with Roman Grosjean there. So dropping one place off the start, then getting the place back off of Grosjean. So back into where we started, P9. Next up is Sebastian Vettel, who is looking very slowly at the moment. We try and go around the outside of Hulkenberg, but we couldn't really progress any further than that as... Vettel was going a little bit cautiously on this first lap. So there we go. On the first lap, we've managed to get ourselves up in a P8. The, the starts of these kind of races always get me a little bit nervous uh, with, you know, reduced traction. You never know if you're just going to lock up and take out half the field sometimes. But we've managed to avoid that. We've got a decent position at the moment for a Toro Rosso. We're in front of our teammate, Carlos Sainz. But lap seven here, this is the very first mistake we made all race having a, a little lock up in a turn one and that allowed Hulkenberg to have a run at us around the outside through turn two. But because we're able to hold the inside line, we're able to hold onto position eight for now. Lap nine, we can see that's Hulkenberg once again on the attack into the final corner here. Because it's wet conditions, there's no DRS available. So that means it's a little bit easier to defend from the AI. And as you can see on this replay, uh, Hulkenberg, I'm not too sure if he had a tank slapper there, a big moment of oversteer, what was the deal here? We'll see on the replay from the Sauber driver, yeah, Hulkenberg just gets up on the curb and loses a lot of traction there, so that allowed Nazar to get through in the turn one on the previous lap, and now he's having a go at us with the Sauber, a decent straight line speed that thing has, 
tracks this season, so he's making full use of that up the inside into turn one. Is he going to hold it though? He's probably left us a little bit too much space there through turn two, and we've taken him back. So this is turning into a very interesting fight here for position eight with a midfield runner. So not too often I'm battling with these guys, and you know I'm really battling with them on genuine pace. So it looks like the Toro also really isn't quite. I don't know, comfortable in these conditions. As you can see, Carlos Saints in P18 at the moment. Some people have already come in, and they've actually put on another set of wets. Despite my engineer telling me, I've, I asked him constantly, like every lab, what's happening with the weather? What's, what's the forecast looking for the next 20 minutes? And he said the rain is slowly easing off. Thanks for that phone. Um, so we're going to go on to intermediate tyres now. So I'm going to take a risk where pretty much down the order anyway. We're only going to get, what, four points if we finish where we are. So let's take a risk and try and, pro and try and propel ourselves into the top five and maybe even the podium runners if we can because at the moment we just have no pace. We've just got to try something and just see how it goes. So we're going to ride on board here for a few seconds here and just see how the intermediates handle in these conditions. You've just got to take it a little bit cautiously on the first lap or two. You just never know how cold the tyres are, how much standing water is going to be on the track. But uh, lap 17, Sebastian Vettel has a massive blowout there. I think that was his engine or possibly a gearbox there. But he pulls over to the side. He's out of this race. That's a free position for us. The Ferraris normally are quite reliable. So to see an engine failure like that so early on in the season is very troubling for his season. Not only for this race, but later on. He's going to have to rely on uh, one less power unit for the rest of this season. But uh, getting back to the action now, lap 17, I believe a manner just pulled into the pit lane now. And we're starting to really find our rhythm here at the middle phase of this race. On intermediate tyres, I'm now going to take another risk in this race. We're going to come in and we're going to put on a set of option tyres to run to the end of the race. I found lately that when you go from a wet to a dry track, the sort of time to switch over to a set of dries is right after the engineer tells you that the uh, DRS has been enabled. So that's sort of right in the window, maybe just after, is when you should switch on to a set of dry tires. But in saying that, it is still raining ever so slightly, so we'll need to watch out for that. Out for that. We'll need to be very, very cautious on this first lap, particularly going through the first sector. Um, that's where I feel like the rain is probably at its heaviest with a low speed corners and just a low speed in general It's it's hard for the tires to generate any temperature You just spin up the rear wheels as you can see they're losing the back end like crazy there I hope we don't have too many more moments like that look at that just trying to catch the car all through the third se the first sector rather but as we went through the high speed corners we we're able to generate a bit of temperature in the tires and then after that I think we were fine so on the next lap we can see a few people already switched over to dry tyres. I've seen I was doing fairly well as uh, Felipe Massa on intermediate tyres has just overtaken me on the straight there. So it's a very interesting battle now shaping up here for P6 in this race. It's dry tyres versus intermediate tyres. I don't think Massa is going to win out though with a drying track. He has to come in on the very next lap here, lap 24, and uh, he's done that. So Ricardo and someone else has also come into the pits as well. So that's put us into P4. So that's been an incredible comeback after the start of this race. We're now going purple. We were nowhere. We were like 9th or 10th or something like that. We had no pace. And here we are on the final lap. We're going to finish in 4th place. Only a couple spots behind all of our championship leaders, so to speak. But um, yeah, what a turn of events. The Malaysian Grand Prix, it's not been the most entertaining race at all but we come across the line here in P4 and just what a what a fantastic turnaround that's been what a day for Lewis Hamilton it's another race win for the British driver Paddy Lowe described it as one of his best drives in a Mercedes he'll be hoping to produce more of the same next time around it really was a great performance and one that I think will be remembered for a long time to come. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. Those 30 second commentary stints that Crofty does, that, that really takes it out of him. He always has to have a lie down after that grueling marathon commentary he just did. But there we go. That has been the Malaysian Grand Prix round number two here for season two of F1 2015 career mode. As I said, it's not been the most 
I don't know, exciting, action-packed race at all. Um, I often quite dread the wet races, but I think in the end, we had a really good race. We played ourselves in really well with the strategy. We did two stops. Everyone around us did three stops or even four stops. So the fact that we were able to do two less stops than everyone around us, it was just incredible. And somehow our tyres didn't explode like the, uh, the video you saw yesterday. Speaking of that, if you want to go have a look at it, go check it out. Um, but um, yeah, once again, Look at the championship, it is so close at the moment. The top three separated by one point. Felipe Massa, after winning the first race, he still leads this championship. Rosberg in second, myself, Max Verstappen, the rookie in Formula One here in 2015, is in third place, one point behind. What a season this is shaping up to be. Leave a like if you're enjoying it so far. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. The next race is in China. Another one of my terrible tracks, but after that, guys, we're it's it's... It's clear sailing. It's probably some of the better tracks on the Formula 1 calendar. We've got Monaco, Bahrain, uh, Spain, Canada. All these awesome tracks for really good racing coming up after that. So stay tuned for that. And until my next video, guys, I'll see you next time.